Hi, good evening. I'm Keshav. Hi, good evening. I'm Rakesh. And we are here to talk about mental wellness and health. And uh, who better to have next to me discussing it than Rakesh? So it's an important day that uh, October 10th that we are recognizing it at World Mental Wellness and Mental Health Day, right? And and in today's uh, day and age, it's increasingly becoming more important to have a very good healthy mental state of being and just to kick, uh, kick start things thought of addressing the basic question rakesh so why do you think mental health is so important nowadays and uh, increasingly going into the future <coughs> uh, yeah so uh, mental health uh, i think uh, in the recent times especially uh, in the busy world we live in it has become a uh, lot more important than just the physical health uh, one of the uh, main reasons i think a uh, lot of people keep talking about is how do i cope up with uh, stress right so stress is one of the major uh, i can say uh, 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 the reason uh, why actually uh, people need to kind of take care of their mental health and then how to cope up with that so i don't need to i think explain what stress is i think people uh, experience it on a uh, day to day basis uh, because of the long working hours because of the long commuting because of uh, the kind of uh, uh, responsibilities uh, uh, you know different people are handling uh, it's it's very important to understand how to actually cope up uh, with the kind of stress they deal with on a day to day basis right that's when actually uh, if you can take care of your mental health it helps you deal with stress i think this is one of the top most reasons uh coming to a few other reasons why mental health is important uh uh the the second one being uh, you know uh, there are a lot of times where we don't know how to deal with certain situations certain unforeseen situations uh be it you know if if some accident happens or be it some uh, some incident which actually which is totally unexpected uh, which happens in your life how to actually deal with that with uh, uh with a calm mind not uh, uh with a lot of anxiety or a lot with not a lot with uh, uh you know uh, uh taking too much stress again to deal with such incidents right so uh in and if you have a good mental health then it helps you deal with those unforeseen situations in your life uh whenever things don't happen according to your plan okay so that's also one of the uh, uh circumstances where actually you need to pay attention to your mental health and having a good mental health helps you and uh the third most important reason is uh mainly uh you know uh, those people it, it need not be just to deal with the negative uh, uh situations like stress or you know certain uh uh, uh bad circumstances but also in terms of uh, uh, like a positive outlook towards uh life uh how to actually perform uh, to your peak potential how to uh, you know uh live up to your full potential so that is one of the areas where uh if you have very good mental health uh then it helps you uh, uh in achieving your goals which you have set out uh for yourself and uh, also helps in your career uh your relationships uh and overall well be right so that's how uh, uh that's why in fact mental health is is extremely important yeah very rightly said uh, rakesh i think just adding on to that is see people in today's age are not suffering what are they suffering the most they're suffering their mind to be honest they're not <coughs> suffering as much from diseases or as much from physical ailments because the world has gotten more comfortable by the day if you see how we evolved we are becoming we are creating all the comfort in the world beat the way we commute through car or <coughs> the way we are eating because we have the uh you know the easy access to different kinds of food but as much as we are becoming more comfortable we are becoming more fragile as well right and that's where towards that fragility our mind should remain strong and people suffer their mind of their past 
there there's a lot of baggage in people's head of their experiences their past and having a good strong mental foundation really helps people to go ahead in this world where things is getting more fragile and fragile day by day i think rightly said uh, probably you know let's let's also look at mental wellness from another angle uh, how do you think actually the food habits we have uh, you know uh, affect the mental health uh, so yeah good yeah, question so. I, and now you know speaking more from food point of view we are in the industry of food right and it's very relevant to talk about how food has a big uh, play on mental health so if you see the core of all that you eat and your health it all boils down to the gut so the gut of the health of your gut is as important as your entire body's health and a lot of times if you have not eaten well slept well you would see that reflecting in your gut health which eventually equates to your mental health as well they say what you eat is what you are for and this is not not only from indian uh, you know saying but even across the world they say this right like what you eat is what you become right and rightly uh, so that if you are not able to take care of your gut bacteria your gut health uh, you are you are going to lead into situations of stress you are going to lead into situations of uh, you know uh, negative emotions or uh not so uh good sleep situations of not go not so good sleep so just to take a few examples right uh whenever you undergo stress your body generates secretes acid more acid and the more acid it secretes the ph level of your inner stomach lining increases and when you are having food which is like junk food or food which is not suitable for your gut that adds to the ph level and creates more acidity in your body right it's all it's all comes down to the different kind of things you are influencing your body to from the sleep cycle from the food cycle to the what you even water that you take ideally you want to create a balance in your body where it's neutral because 70% of the body is water and you want to keep keep the body's balance as close to what the ph level of water is so the foods that you eat if it's more deep fried um, or more acidic in nature lot of citrus fruits is not good for your gut health right it it actually disturbs and kills the bacteria of your gut and this coupled with stress and coupled with improper sleep leads to a cycle where you are feeling not at ease in mind you are stress also leads to anxiety so more more of acidity more of acidity leads to anxiety so all of this adds up and leads to eventually your mental state of being to be disturbed so the basic level uh, at the basic level of understanding is that to have a balanced body you need to have a balanced gut to have a balanced mind you need to have a balanced body in the first place and your diet again needs to be balanced to enforce this that's why that's how the uh, english diets which recommend a good mix of protein carb and fiber even indian diets recommend that indian diets which are like more from ayurvedic times they talk about how uh, they look at each individual's body and identify whether it's a uh, you know if it's the vayu element is more or if the pitta element is more or if the if, if what element is like majority in your body and accordingly they kind of suggest a diet but an english diet also works a lot of times where you have a balanced amount of proteins carbs and fibers going in right and one easy uh, advice to anyone is that if you don't know what to eat a lot of times there's too, too much information on the internet about this diet that diet and xyz but if you if you want to simplify it and don't want want to have a no nonsense way to having food just look at what your forefathers ate your parents and their parents because what they ate and they were able to digest you will be also able to digest because your gut your it's coming from there like your your uh, constituents of your gut bacteria it's actually coming from your forefathers and what they've been able to digest for all this while and what their diet has been 
you will be able to process the same diet so if if your forefathers are vegetarian it's better if you are a vegetarian similarly if if they are more like uh, millet eaters and you know that if your forefathers lived on like the ragi and the fox tail millets etc you would be able to consume that very cleanly but if you ask someone whose forefathers were only rice eaters they might not like the millet diet or they might not be able to kind of absorb and uh, process the millet diet even for example you see a lot of people are not able to eat maida and a lot of people are not able to digest maida so easily or consume non veg so easily it's because your body your forefathers have never eaten that food and your your digestive tract was never able to digest that food so it's very important to look at uh what works for you at the same time trying to maintain a balanced diet which has a mix of different kinds of foods fibers is going to be very helpful in terms of digestion any time when you are not able to process or digest food food with lot of veggies vegetables uh which has especially complex carbohydrates is is going to be very good for your digestion so in in short you know these are these are the different ways food can impact your gut which would eventually impact your mental state of being yeah yeah rightly said uh, keshav so uh i think the inference what we can draw is yes uh, you need to have you know right food habits uh more than calling as good food habits maybe i would want to call it as right food habits uh but at the same time there is a lot of talk about healthy uh diet right uh, which uh you know uh people are obsessed these days that you know i want to have organic food i want to have healthy right. food so how do you think actually a healthy diet helps in you know mental uh in in actually keeping a good mental health or mental well being right as as i said health is a very subjective thing and cannot be generalized and uh, if if you take people from uh us and uk right their daily diet is is not so varied they they generally have you know pizzas every day or even burgers and sandwiches every day we might not be able to process that and for them that is actually healthy a sand a cold sauce sandwich uh, with a lot of veggies is actually healthy but back home in india we have always uh, resorted to uh, even when it comes to wheat based products we have resorted not to baked products but actually cooked like on a tawa like roti and chapatis right which is easy to digest for us so health is something which where you go into a uh, google article or if you if you search on google 10 tips for healthy diet all of them are like very contextual based so when you talk about health it's completely contextual based as i said look at what your forefathers have been eating as a base you will be able to consume it very well second is have a very balanced uh, diet with a mix of different types of uh kind of uh, different types of food like a mix of protein in your diet mix of carbs and mix of uh, uh even uh, uh fibers in your diet because the more you have a mix of this diet you are able to have ba- maintain a balance in ph level as well as give the nutrients that your body needs so a lot of times your body needs energy through carbs but also needs to build muscle through uh you know protein and then if you are someone who's very active uh and who's exercising a lot you might need to consume a little more protein than someone else right and if if you are someone who's sedentary lifestyle and uh, you, you're you're just going about your day without much of as much activity fibers and a low amount of protein and fibers and you know a decent amount of carbs does the job so it's a it's a lot dependent on what your lifestyle is what your kind of history of your family is and what is also an important thing is what is available locally because a lot of times a lot of recommendations that you get on websites or youtube or channels is may not be available or grown locally and whenever is not something is not grown locally one is it may not be fresh second is uh, it may not have the kind of nutrients that your body has 
has uh, always been looking for because there's a history associated with lo- locally grown grown foods if you're from a certain region your body is able to <coughs> able to absorb nutrients from those veggies and those produce much more easily from some than from somewhere else so go local uh go back to your roots and try to be balanced is what i can say when it comes to a healthy diet be be mindful of uh consuming only till like say 70 80% of your maximum capacity so that you don't get bloated or you you don't end up uh putting all your energy in digesting the food itself so you need to be able to operate outside of just digesting the food right you're working somewhere you have things to do so focus on having 70 to 80% of the body's capacity and then you would be safe i think that that's that's what i had other other things is like know your limits on do indulge uh, whenever you feel like but know your limits whether whether it comes to alcohol or any of those things know th- know that when you are aging also you know you need to know realize that you are a- only able to consume this much beyond a certain point so be aware and conscious of how your age is also affecting on your body and accordingly plan your diet so yeah this is this is what i had to say so rakesh so we spoken about food we spoken about why mental uh, health and wellness is important but a lot of things comes down to habits and lifestyle which actually you carry right for which ultimately it which is harder to mold or change right so how do you think you know this can be taken care of how do you think that they, we could incorporate certain self- healthy lifestyle changes habits which are easy to begin with and build up over time towards a much better mental state of being yeah i think uh, that's that's one of the most uh, important or probably critical aspects which is basically the habits the lifestyle which we are living right so how are uh, i mean we are what our habits are right so uh, we are what we repeatedly do which is nothing but our habits right so uh, like you know i would like to kind of go one by one here so i think one of the most important things which is for us uh, we we operate uh, in terms of energy right so we eat food because we uh, we need that energy to operate uh, and live uh, at the same time uh, as important as food you know sleep is as important as food wherein uh, we need to get sound sleep right so sleep is one of the most important aspects but on the most neglected or probably uh, the aspects which is taken for granted by many people that even if i sleep for less number of hours nothing might happen or even if i don't have regular sleeping cycles nothing might happen right so rather than uh, me talking about okay you should sleep well okay uh, i would want to say if you don't sleep well or if you don't have regular uh sleeping habits then how does it uh, how does that affect mental health right we need to uh understand that uh you know when you sleep uh right you actually uh uh, uh you know go to a unconscious state where uh you know uh, certain certain chemicals are released uh inside your body which actually helps in generating that energy which is required to operate uh when you wake up for the next uh around 16 to 18 hours right so if you don't sleep well what happens is you feel groggy you are more irritable you are more uh you know uh, uh you know Stressed. you have the more te- you have more tendency to get angry or to you're more stressed you're not able to focus right what does that what does this do on your mind is basically it it actually generates all these negative feelings uh and it feeds negative thoughts right so uh feelings and thoughts are more of a vicious circle your more positive thoughts feeds more positive feelings and then in turn it feeds more positive uh, uh aspects in your life but if you don't sleep well right uh, then you are in a constant state of uh you know negativity throughout the day which affects uh 
uh, your mental health uh, in a very negative way so ensuring that even if you like the best sleeping uh, uh, habit is basically to get up uh, early and sleep early and get up early but for many people it is difficult but at least even if you're sleeping slightly late maybe around 12 o'clock 1 o'clock getting up at around 7 8 o'clock having 7 to 8 hours of minimum sleep is very much required and ensuring that regular sleeping cycles are maintained right it shouldn't happen that one one day you sleep at 3 o'clock and get up at 10 o'clock and then the other day you sleep at 12 o'clock and get up at 7 o'clock right so this ends up uh, you know affecting uh, uh, your mental health very badly so uh, first is the sleep right i think the coming to the next one which is uh, i think the most talked about word uh, in 21st century which is social media right uh, where social media is one of uh, the best things that have ha- that has happened to the planet uh, in different ways but also on the worst things uh, if you look at it in a different way where uh, if you are not able to use it properly or the generation of this society they are so addicted uh, that there is so much of information intake uh, which happens okay without your knowledge and also the people who have built this platform they are very smart in fact the psychologists uh, or uh, you know experts have built this in such a way that you keep uh, uh, ho- you're actually hooked to that platform for a very long time what that leads to is basically you you're constantly taking information right uh, there is a tendency for us to constantly compare ourselves uh, with others uh, where you know you always tend to focus on the things which you don't have right and which you uh, because in social media you guys would have realized that uh, people keep posting or you keep seeing things which are probably uh, something which you are, which you don't have or which you wish to have or which uh, are your dreams maybe right so that puts you in a very negative state of uh, lack of having things or of lack of abundance and what happens uh, later that these negative feelings again leads to negative thoughts and then again right uh, it affects your mental health what that leads to is also as kesha was saying how food affects uh, the sleep cycles or how food affects uh, the other physical aspects if this is not taken care right then you know it ends up affecting your mental health and if mental health gets affected rest everything again it has a cascading effect right so i think reducing your time on social media and uh, you know that is something which uh, uh, as a part of your lifestyle uh, habit okay it's it's very important to inculcate uh, there are different ways to do it uh, i may not want to get uh, go deep into that part now uh, maybe we can have a separate session on the hacks to uh, develop these habits right, right? so uh, coming to the third part which is uh, uh, the most uh, important which is the uh, which is taking care of the physical health, uh, right which is basically if you are able to take care of physical health then it in in turn affects your mental health right so taking out some time every day to exercise to do some physical activity which ends up you know uh, burning Uh, some amount of uh, like they say around 300 to 400 calories per day that affects mental health how does that affect mental health uh, basically when you work out when you exercise so it releases a lot of toxins from your body right and also uh, it actually uh, reduces the uh, release of a stress hormone called cortisol right it helps and basically it, it, it actually energizes you right uh when you're sweating and and then you take a good shower after that so it it sets you up for the entire day right so uh that way you know every cell of your body is very rejuvenated and then you know uh, you have that energy uh going uh, on for the entire day so i would say i think uh, these are the main three aspects in our lifestyle if we can uh Uh, work towards okay uh, then it affects the mental health uh, in a very positive way uh, uh, i think that's what uh, i think uh, i think it's important 
Yeah, I actually want to share a small story where I I look it look up to this person as an inspiration every day. And he's right inside my house. Oh. He's my grandfather. He's 88 year old. He drives the car himself. He gets up at 4:45 every day. He starts his day with two glasses of water and some exercise, yoga basically. Goes for a walk, drives his car to Lalbagh, does a 45 minute walk, comes back and reads the newspaper and then he does his morning routine of uh, meditation and puja and all of that and in in the last e- evening also he does a walk again so he goes back in the evening uh, post lunch goes for a walk and he 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 finishes dinner by 8:30 and he's asleep by 9:30 he's the most lively person i've seen he's the most happiest person he keeps cracking jokes all the time whenever he sees me very jovial and i always look up to him like how is he able to maintain uh, such good health as well as you know mental mental health right like it's it's and it's not even a thing in their mind that we need to do all of these things to it's just a routine it's just a part of his life uh, right so it, it doesn't even there might be certain things which might happen like which are beyond his influence it doesn't even bother him he just sticks to his routine he is happy and content with his life and when i see lot of these patterns what you are talking about sleeping on time rising with the sun sleeping with the sun you know eating only as much uh, drinking water food habits you know and and even exercise you know all of these are like their lifestyle which they are naturally been following and it doesn't even mental health or wellness is not even a thing for them it's like inbuilt so this wanted to share this one fact that i uh, I I look up to in my life and I I'm sure there are many other such people from our older generation who we can look up to in our own lives who who maintain such great health and vitality. Moving on Rakesh probably you know we can end end uh, the session with this last question on we spoken about so much gyan about mental wellness and health <laughs> right now it's when it comes to actually implementing things yeah. right what can we take away and what can we do on a daily basis to actually promote uh, and maintain mental wellness what are some of the two three things at least that we could do on a daily basis to begin with as a beginner to start yeah. following this line so uh, i think uh, uh, yeah we discussed about the importance of mental health but uh, this has been a question in uh, my mind for many many years because a lot of all these habits we i also wanted to inculcate and uh, you know uh, finally when i went to the root cause and what is the solution that one solution which can take care of all these aspects like you know uh, at once right so that's when i found out uh, uh, i came across uh, the concept of meditation right uh and meditation is uh, as the the practice of meditation uh i would say uh has been life changing for me uh and uh, it it almost took <laughs> i would say 5 years to become consistent at it uh it was not a, a easy pursuit i would say uh but uh, uh you know meditation is uh, i think for those of you who don't know what meditation is basically uh it's a process uh, of uh, training your mind okay to focus on one object uh, uh or uh, one aspect or uh, anything you would want to focus on uh for a longer period uh so that you reach a more balanced emotional state you reach a more calmer state you reach a more uh, you know a, a more uh, uh, you know a happier state right so uh, that's the entire process of meditation uh and uh, the ultimate goal uh, is basically to move from a compulsive state uh to a conscious state uh, of mind right uh, because uh, most of the reasons why uh, we are actually not able to inculcate good habits which uh which uh, helps us keep good physical health or mental health is because we are uh, driven by our compulsions we uh, we we can't stop smoking we know it's not good for health okay uh, because we are compelled to smoke 
the same time we we can't stop eating more or junk food because you're compelled to eat if you're conscious of eating or conscious of smoking then you would never actually do the wrong thing right so uh, there are there are crimes happening out there okay because of uh, because of the compulsions people have the thief is compelled is not conscious of doing a crime right you might have heard uh, thieves say that okay uh, i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> right so that's because they are not conscious of it so that way uh, you know meditation uh, uh, practicing meditation at least for uh, 15 to 20 minutes a day uh, that helps you uh, uh, you know uh, uh, change the way you look at the entire world and changes your perception of the world and the moment you start looking at things as they are and not as how you are right uh you actually start realizing that there is a solution for every problem and at the same time you are responsible for your own life because the moment you start blaming the external world for what you go through uh that's when your mental health gets affected because you always continue to think that you know the outside world is the reason for what's happening with you which is not the case right so uh i think that way meditation helps uh, a lot uh i think uh, coming to a uh, few other uh, you know practices which you can uh, follow is uh, 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 write a gratitude journal so uh, i actually been practicing this and uh, basically what it does is uh, you know being more grateful for the things which you have for the people you have for the good things which people uh have in them or for good things which are there in your job which in your relationships uh, right about your past about your future just write write it down somewhere so once you keep doing it consistently what it leads to is that basically it it recondition reconditions your subconscious right so a subconscious mind is basically con- i mean subconscious mind is that part of the mind which actually controls 95% of what happens in your day to day life so and it is made up of your past so you are you are allowing your past to control your future basically if you do not act upon your subconscious right so uh once you practice the gratitude list so you'll be so grateful no matter what situation you are in you will have you will find some or the other thing to be grateful for right and then uh what that does is basically you will feel abundant most of the time you feel you don't feel the lack of things as we spoke earlier right and what that leads to is that generates good feelings which in turn generates leads to good thoughts right and positive thoughts and that takes care of the mental health and coming to the third part which i think uh, uh, i started following consciously which helped uh, in ca- in maintaining my uh, uh, mental health uh, and i've learned it from people is basically uh you know they say that uh, at the end uh, all that matters is taking out time all the all, the, all that matters is basically uh, how much you lived how much you loved and how much you laughed right so on a day to day basis you ask yourself how much time you are taking out to do the things which you really love how much time you are taking out to do the things which actually makes you happy right so uh you know what i started doing was basically i started listing out the things which i really love to do be it playing sports i love to dance be it, you know taking out time to uh, for dancing or it 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 could be you know spending great time with friends right and we are not conscious of this right most of the times we get so busy with our day to day life that we don't take enough time to take out uh, take enough time to do things which you really love to do or you know you, you love traveling but you love listening to songs so most of you love listening to songs but you ask yourself when was the last time you downloaded good new songs from any of the uh, apps out there right so by doing this what it does is basically you are in a constant state of those uh, good vibrations of love and excitement and laughter and happiness right so uh, taking out some time in a day to actually do the things which matter a lot to you which you really love i think 
this is this is also helped uh, me a lot and i'm sure you know if you start doing it consciously uh, it it will take care of the mental health so uh, all in all so these are the three simple practices which you can inculcate to develop uh, you know good mental health uh, for lifetime amazing amazing set of points i, re- I truly i was just while i was listening i could relate to how these things could actually impact a lot of our employees who are listening when when they actually process these thoughts and try to think of how they can take it back and implement it in their lives and also wanted to lead lead one one more last thought to what rakesh said is the act of giving or helping others without expectation right there's a there's a lot of happiness people derive from and self satisfaction people derive from helping others when in need or even when you know it's not expressed right what it does as humans as we are social creatures right and as humans it gives us a lot of mental peace and satisfaction when we are actually know that we are there for someone when they needed or when they actually deserved the help right and that is something the act of giving in whatever small way in whatever means and in whatever position you are in the act of giving creates a lot of gratitude is the first step being grateful for all that you have as you said and probably the next step to that is actually giving back or giving to people i've seen that it's actually reforms your mind in a lot of ways and gives you a good level of mental peace and satisfaction because at the end of the day when as you said at the end of the day when all set and done when you leave this planet no one's going to ask you or they might remember you but for what for your own stuff or for how how you have actually impacted this planet and this part of selfless giving is one that lasts the longest is in my opinion and th- this is one act that i would recommend everyone to do in their own small way without having any expectation but giving yeah so yeah that's that, it that, from my side i, yeah, I would yeah. leave <laughs> no that makes a lot of sense i think uh, uh, actually uh, you become more compassionate uh, when you start following gratitude journal in fact i could feel that for myself and i started doing it so you actually start becoming a more of a giving person may if you can inculcate these habits yeah yeah and mm. thanks rakesh and yeah. uh, for Thank having you. the discussion <laughs> <laughs> i think we should do more of these and yeah. i hope it help the people who are watching and listening in happy journey mm. for each of you in your mental wellness and look yeah. forward to you know hearing from you guys of as to how this would have helped you guys thank you thank you Thank you.